Welcome to this episode of the Disease Du Jour podcast, where we're going to talk to the Merck Animal Health Equine Professional Services team about the upcoming AAEP convention in San Antonio. Our guests today are Dr. Bryant Craig, Dwayne Chapel, Christy Schneider, Cara Wright, and Philip Van Hirabel. Thanks everybody for joining us today. And we're going to chat with each one of these veterinarians to see what they're looking forward to at the upcoming AAP convention and maybe give you some insights on talks or gatherings you don't want to miss. And I know, Dr. Craig, that you have a few new folks on your team this year. So let's take a moment to introduce them. So I'm going to start with you, Dr. Craig. So thanks, Kim, for having us, first of all. And we always look forward to this episode as we get to kind of dig through the program at AEP and see what we might want to check out. Um, and just for those that don't know me, um, I'm Bryant Craig, and I am part of this equine professional services team for about the last 10 years. Came out of practice in Oklahoma um, after graduating from Oklahoma State Vet School and now um, make Merck Animal Health my home. So with that, I'll move to Dr. Chapel and let him introduce himself. I'm Dwayne Chapel, and I reside outside of Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, I've been with Merck Animal Health since uh, 2014, and prior to that, spent time in equine and small animal practice in Illinois and Indiana. I uh, graduated from Purdue University several years ago and uh, had a stint of teaching at Moorhead State University between practice and Merck Animal Health. And I'll pass the ball on to Christy Snyder. Hi, everybody. Thanks, Kim, for having us. Uh, I'm Chrissy Schneider. I live in Columbus, Ohio. I uh, went to Ohio State for vet school and also did a master's in uh, residency there as well in their equine field service, um, board certified um, ABVP, American Board of Veterinary Practitioners. And I've been with Merck Animal Health for two years, a little over two years now. Thanks, Chrissy. We will go to Dr. Wright. Hi, thank you for having me. My name is Cara Wright. I am originally from the East Coast, but I currently reside in the Bay Area of California. I um, went to Maryland for undergrad. I went to LSU, Go Tigers, for grad school, where I studied the reproductive characteristics of insulin-resistant and obese mares. For vet school, I went to Virginia, Maryland, and then um, I went to Ocala for an internship, and I've been in private practice until June of 2022 when I joined the team here at Merck Animal Health. Perfect. All right. Last but certainly not least, Dr. Van Herveld. Hey, nice to meet everybody. Um, I am originally from Brazil. Um, I came to the United States and went to vet school at North Carolina State. Um, following that, I did an internship, a surgery residency, and a master's degree at Kansas State University. I'm boarded in equine surgery. Um, I've been in practice for 22 years uh, until I joined the team here at Merck um, in May of this year. Um, I founded and operated Vermont Large Animal Clinic, which was a referral practice with field service. And I just recently sold that to my associates. Well, that's great. Well, it's nice to meet everyone. And I'm sure that our audience looks forward to chatting with you in person in San Antonio. So let's get right into it. Everybody's excited about going to uh, San Antonio. It's always a fun place for the convention. And it looks like it's going to be a great one this year. So Dr. Craig, first, what's your favorite part of an AAP convention? and what would be on your list of can't miss presentations or talks? So my favorite part's an easy one. Um, just getting everybody together in one spot from all over the country. It's it's hard to see and talk to all your friends you've made over the years. And being an AEP gives us a chance to do that in just a few short days in one spot. So um, that's always my favorite is to get to catch up with everybody and that hallway time and, and coffee time that we aren't able to get um, as we go through our busy lives throughout the year. So and my my top picks this year are First of all, our sunrise session, uh, that's a Merck sponsored session on Saturday morning at 630. So it's an early morning, but I think one that's worth it for those of you that are interested. And the title is going to be building a sustainable future for the equine profession. And we're having a, a table of panelists. Um, including Dr. Amy Grice, Dr. Laura Jeff Sikas, Dr. David Stevens, 
Dr. Stacy Cordovano and then Dr. Van Hereveld from our team. And we're just going to kind of build on what got started last year at AAP with some of the sustainable and then just have a kind of open forum discussion on strategies for <clears throat> retaining people in your practice and recruiting people into equine practice as well. And then the second one that I wanted to highlight is going to be storytelling Texas style. So what started out several years back as, as Vets Story Night has evolved um, year to year into last year, what was an amazingly successful event in Nashville. And we hope to build on that momentum and, and have another sold out show. If you haven't got your tickets yet for this event, get them now because there are very few left. Last time I talked to Keith Klein with AAP, it was, they were going fast, but it'll be another great event with um, a handful of veterinarians telling some great stories. And then we've got a, an up and coming musical act that everybody will really enjoy a different one than we had in Nashville, but kind of similar in nature. So um, that's something that you certainly don't want to miss. And then lastly, uh, Kind of building on that sustainability effort is a talk that our Dr. Wright is giving on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. That's going to be how to use a mentorship framework to support an early career veterinarian. So um, Dr. Wright's done a lot of work with sustainability efforts and also lots of work in helping to build your staff and, you know, what needs to be done to train those people upright and, and then to gain opportunities out there in practice. So I think she's going to deliver a lot of insight that people will find useful. Yeah, those, those sound like a, a nice variety of, of talks. And I'm going to add in, if, if you are one of these people that doesn't like to get up for the sunrise sessions, you're really missing something good. There are some wonderful presentations here with some industry folks. So I, I would highly recommend you get up. They've got coffee and a, a food. So you don't just get up from get ready and just come on down. So let's go next to Dr. Chapel. Dr. Chapel, what are you in favor? What's your favorite part of the AP convention and what are your can't miss presentations this year? Well Kim, I, I always like to start out AP with uh, some time spent with the committee meetings. And I have found that uh, they've been a great networking event for me throughout uh, my time at AEP convention. Uh, I will highlight uh, one that I chair currently, the Professional Conduct and Ethics Committee. We'll have an open session, as do many of the committees, for the general membership. And then typically, depending on the nature of business within that committee, they will have a closed session on the latter half of their time allotment. Uh, other things that I'm interested in, uh, I had the opportunity this year to uh, do a couple presentations, and so I want to highlight those. One will be on our biosurveillance program, looking specifically at the equine influenza portion, uh, and I'll be presenting an abstract on that on Saturday afternoon. And then, uh, in addition to that opportunity to speak, I'm going to also have a time to share and moderate a panel discussion with the Professional Conduct and Ethics Committee that will take place uh, on Monday and will involve not only a short presentation, but more importantly, a panel discussion uh, about topics related to mentoring ethics and equine practice. The panel makeup will be uh, Dr. Fairfield Bain. Dr. Shane Baird, Dr. Leanne Kubelbeck, and Rachel Liepman. And I think we'll get a nice uh, variety of discussion from these folks, and they'll be able to shed some light on what they do in their practice situations, uh, encouraging new colleagues to the equine profession to adhere to some very uh, basic foundational principles in mentoring ethics. Those are great topics. And just to let our audience know, we'll make sure in the article that goes up on equimanagement.com, if you, you missed some of these, we'll make sure and do a list of the, the Merck team's picks and when they're going to be around so you can not miss these. Okay, so Dr. Schneider, let's see what you've got on your list for 2022 in San Antonio. All right. Well, I, 
I don't have anything different from uh, Dr. Craig as far as what my favorite part of AAP is. It's got to be seeing everybody. Um, and I think the River Walk in San Antonio is just a great location, great spot for that to happen, um, in addition to all the hallway time and um, and things like that. But I'm really excited to see everybody. And um, I think you can't beat, beat that part of AAP. Uh, so as far as sessions that I'm looking forward to, um, you know, on Saturday uh, at 9 a.m., that uh, session kicks off AEP. So that's the keynote address. And it's entitled Boundaries, When to Say Yes and How to Say No When You Need to. Uh, and that's going to be presented by John Townsend. Um, he has a, a Ph.D. Um, and. This is definitely in his wheelhouse um, to talk to us about. And boundaries in general can be tricky, right, for all of us to set and to maintain across all types of relationships, whether that's personal, professional, uh, or even within yourself. Um, professionally, I think thinking about what our boundaries are and how we can communicate them eff effectively is foundational to fulfillment and longevity in equine practice, which, um, you know, as we go through these sessions and as you guys look through um, the calendar and the schedule for AEP, you'll see there's a lot of um, discussion about sustainability. And, um, you know, obviously that's a, a hot topic in our industry right now. So I think we all have probably a lot to learn from this session. So I recommend everybody check it out. And then um, also on Saturday, uh, but in the afternoon, um, there's a table topic uh, entitled Field Neurology, and that is going to be kind of led by Drs. Monica Alleman and Steve Reed. Um, this session is also going to be re-offered um, live after the convention uh, virtually. So if you miss it, you know, in person in San Antonio, or if you're not going to make it to San Antonio this year, uh, you'll be able to catch that table topic after the fact, which I think is a, a really cool feature. Um, so, of course, you know, Neurologic Horse presents a challenge for all of us um, diagnostically. And I think this is a, a portion of vet med that's changing constantly. And, um, you know, these Dr. Alleman and Dr. Reed certainly are on the forefront of that. And so I think I love table topics because it's a way to interact with other practitioners and hear what other people are seeing in the field, um, how they're diagnosing, what they're treating with. And it's very practical information. I think that you get to take home from those. And then um, on Sunday, um, part of the business practice, practice track, um, Dr. Stacy Cordovano is uh, presenting a session called Why Employees Quit? Psychological safety is key for reducing turnover and improving the bottom line. So, um, again, you know, along the lines of um, keeping practitioners in um, equine practice and not just practitioners, right? Technicians, assistants, receptionists, just the whole team. Um, we want to keep them for sure. Um, and psychological safety in general is kind of a new term for me, a new idea for me uh, that I, I haven't been super familiar with. So I'm looking forward to learning more about it. Um, and clearly when we're, when we're all working together as a team, we have to be able to talk to each other and communicate with each other. And there can't be uh, kind of fear of long-term consequences or retaliation. Um, and I think it also ties in really closely with boundaries. Um, you know, even if we know what our boundaries are, can we communicate them? Um, is it safe to do so? And of course, Dr. Cordovano is on the forefront of sustainability issue um, with both her podcast, The Whole Veterinarian, and also as a co-founder of the Sustainability and Equine Practice Seminar. So um, I'm looking forward to hearing what she has to say about this topic. And then the last thing I'll highlight um, is on Monday afternoon, um, there's kind of a group of sessions uh, called Emerging Industry Issues, uh, Transforming Equine Practice. And um, hopefully you guys are all aware. And if, if you're not yet, you'll hear a lot about it. I think at this convention, um, the AAEP has recently organized the Commission for Equine Veterinary Sustainability. And under that umbrella, there are six subcommittees. Um, and those are internships, emergency coverage, compensation, practice culture, student outreach, um, and mentor groups. And these subcommittees were recently formed uh, and are in the early stages of their work together. And so this block of sessions provides um, an opportunity for members of those subcommittees to present key factors that they've identified so far as affecting sustainability of equine practice um, and what are in need of solutions. 
So if you have suggestions or ideas for any of these subcommittees, uh, there will be an opportunity on Friday afternoon um, to discuss with members of each subcommittee, um, or you can reach out to the chair of each subcommittee directly to give them your perspective. Um, so I think there's gonna be a lot to, to talk about and, and work on together as a group. Yeah, that's an important big step forward by the AEP. So it, that, that might be one not to miss. Today's Disease Is Your podcast is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the maker of prestige vaccines, Banamine, Panicure, Regimate, Protozil, and other trusted equine health solutions. Merck Animal Health works for you and for horses. Learn more about Merck Animal Health's comprehensive portfolio of products, as well as their unconditional investment in our industry, profession, and community through programs such as the Respiratory Biosurveillance Program, the partnership with Equitrace, which delivers secure, streamlined record keeping and instantaneous temperature measurements when coupled with Merck Animal Health Biotherm Microchips. Visit MerckAnimalHealthUSA.com for more information. Okay, so Dr. Wright, what are, are your favorite parts of AAP and what do you suggest folks don't miss? Um, well, my favorite part of AAP is probably the same as everybody, right? Is like just getting to see people, right? You're seeing people that you've known throughout your career um, and getting a chance to really visit and reconnect. Um, things that I am, you know, I would say or do not miss. I agree with Dr. Schneider, the um, emerging and industry issues on Monday afternoon. I think those are gonna be really important. You know, equine practice is definitely in a transformational stage right now. And, you know, right now we're at a really exciting place, which is maybe the old model's not working, but that, that means we can create it to make it whatever we want. Um, so this would be a really great way for people to connect with each other and share some ideas and really see you know, grab some tips and tricks from other people to, for the things that are giving you trouble to see what else is out there um, and how other people are making it work. Um, along those same lines, I'm looking forward to the Avenue's internship and externship career night. I think um, with practice and a lot of people have been talking about this, we're losing students before they even get to fourth year. So I think it's really important that we are doing a lot of student outreach. And instead of people talking about you know, equine practice doesn't get paid enough and we have so much debt and you have to work 24 seven. We need to reach students and tell them about why we love equine practice and what is awesome about it and why they should consider it as they are going through um, vet school into fourth year and into choosing internships or associate positions. Um, so I'm really looking forward to connecting to the new faces and hopefully um, creating some relationships there. Um, another session that I think is going to be really important for everybody along the same lines, um, Sunday afternoon, there's a couple of sessions talking about acquiring wealth. And there's one by Dr. Amy Grice that talks about practice ownership as the key to financial health. And then another one um, immediately following entitled Seeding the Field to Grow Future Owners by Dr. Guardia. And I think both of those are really important points when we do talk about some of the, the trouble spots with student debt loads and that kind of thing. Um, is is understanding finances and how to make the most of equine practice, um, especially right now with a lot of the corporate acquisitions coming in. I think it's really important for associates to understand what their options are and what it looks like for them, because I think for a lot of us that have been out, you know, for 10 years ish and we're looking at our next step, like seeing these corporations come in makes you feel like um, your options might be limited. So I think those are going to be sessions that would be really good for people um, to gather some more information. And then um, I have a lot. I'm excited. I haven't been to AAP in a couple of years, I guess. So um, I'm going to be bouncing all over the place. Um, one of my colleagues that I actually met, she's from Australia, Dr. Tanya Sundra, is going to be presenting on Sunday afternoon um, about the use of ertuglifizin, which is a very big word for me, but it is a medication that is used for the management of hyperinsulinemia and laminitis. Um, it's a, it prevents uh, glucose uptake in the kidney. So there's some new and novel ideas coming out, which um, hopefully could be used in these laminitic equine metabolic syndrome, hyperinsulinemia courses, which I think all of us in practice know. I mean, it's a devastating disease process if you don't get a handle on it. So um, to talk about a new potentially new treatment that we may be able to use is really exciting. And then um, the last thing I'm going to talk about um, Monday morning, there's a session talking about dealing with EHV1 outbreaks and strangles outbreaks. 
which, um, you know, was that when I was in private practice in California, I felt like we dealt with a lot of herpes outbreaks. So I'm excited to, you know, get some kind of group think and see if anybody has any more ideas on how to make this, um, you know, the quarantining, the biosecurity and all of the protocols less stressful for the owners, the trainers, the horses, the vets, everybody involved. Um, I think that's it. Well, but see, that's the problem that most people have when they go to the convention is there's so many things they want to see. That's one reason we kind of want to get some tips. Yeah. You know, I might have read over that and I am, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that word. It's at 350 that afternoon. And I yeah. might have read over that. But now it's like, that's intriguing. I want to go hear more about that. So it's one reason we do this is to try and perk people's ears up. OK, and Dr. Ben Harrivel. Okay, I think that joining my crew here, I think getting together with, you know, previous colleagues and, and previous interns, and also I kind of enjoy having the whole equine Merck team together in one place as well, sort of is probably one of my favorite things to do when I get to the AEP. Um, as far as topics, you know, I'm a little wide range here, but uh, a few that I'm looking forward to is, and I think that people will enjoy this, one is called intraarticular Therapies in the Field, Traditional Options for Injections. As a referring vet, I answered many, many phone calls of uh, younger practitioners or people that don't do a lot of joint therapies. Hey, I have this horse with joint disease, what am I going to inject in this horse? I really don't know what to do. And I think that this might be a good session for people to attend since there's not really established protocols at all. You can pull several people about how to treat a joint and you'll get completely different answers. So hopefully this will streamline it a little bit and help some folks make some decisions in the field as to how to address these uh, horses with uh, some joint disease. Another topic I'm looking at is how practices can reduce accounts receivable by moving to payment at the time of service. I think that is something that I've learned my lessons in the past. Um, I think that it's an essential part of business. I think sometimes people are scared to, ch to charge clients at the time of service. But I feel that we as practitioners work very hard to make a living. And I think that collecting our for our services is very important because it decreases frustration and resentment in practice. You feel like you're working hard and you're getting paid. And I think that in some indirect way, it can also help with professional sustainability. If you add to some of the difficulties that we already have, and then on top of that, you don't get paid, I don't think that helps the cause very much at all. So I think that this is a good topic to address. Another one would be case-based pain management scenarios in general practice. Um, I think this is an important topic. I think small animal and even in people, they've really moved into the management of chronic pain and how to address that. I don't think very often we know very much about it. I think we're used to some basic anti-inflammatories that we give on a regular basis, but I think new techniques are coming out all the time. And I think it's important for us as equine practitioners to start moving into that direction. We do have some conditions in horses where we're not going to resolve the problem with their long-term pain ailments. And I think that updating a little bit what we know and how to manage those is important for the horse. And then the last one that I have is one I've dealt with a lot in practice is the recurrent colic, an important yet poorly understood problem. Um, I think that this is a little bit of a trial and error. I think that when most practitioners get confronted with this problem with their clients and their horses. It's a little bit of a try this, try that kind of thing. And I think it's a topic that needs to move into something that is a little bit more standardized and how to address and diagnose these conditions and also into therapies that can be used as rule outs, you know, to try to improve this problem. So I think that is not a bad session. And I think most equine practitioners deal with that problem. So it might be a very informative topic. So those are the four that I decided I would like to see some attendance for. Okay, I think those are all good topics. I think this has been a great list. And again, we'll, I'll make sure and include uh, the names of the talks, who's presenting them, and the times on the article that goes with this on equimanagement.com if you want to go to, uh, to read that. Or, of course, you can just download the, the program or start looking for them when you get there. And Dr. Craig, I mean, your team will be at AAP. You have a booth. Make sure, of course, everybody stop by and say hello. But we're missing one of the team members today. 
And he will also be at AAP, correct, Dr. Bain? Dr. Bain and, and Dr. Vala, a former member, will both be there. So um, for, for any topic out there in the equine world, this team has it covered. We, we can literally cover from cradle to grave, as Dr. Bain likes to say. So um, yeah, please stop by the booth and, and have a chat. Or if you've got a specific question, um, find somebody that can uh, reach out to us and we'll get it answered for you. I guess they these this team is very good about uh, responding and answering questions and pointing me in the right direction. So, and I got to especially thank Dr. Schneider. She she puts up with a lot of my questions on uh, Dr. Schneider, who would be really good to talk to about this topic. So thank you for that, that you've helped me with the podcast. And again, thanks to the whole Merck Animal Health team, because it's been fun having you on here and it's been fun working with you these last few years for the Disease Du Jour podcast. And for our listeners, if you haven't listened to all the back episodes of Disease Du Jour, there's some great topics and great resources who presented on there. So make sure and go back. You can find them on your favorite podcast platform or all of them have a player on equimanagement.com. So it makes it very easy. And if you have any questions or suggestions, send an email to me at kbrown, that's the letter K Brown at equinenetwork.com. Is there anything else that anyone on the team wants to say before we sign off today? I'll just say thanks for the partnership, Kim. And uh, this is always a, a fun time every year and looking forward to seeing everybody at AEP. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be a great AEP this year. And we look forward to seeing everybody in person. Thank you so much. And the Disease Du Jour podcast is production of the Equine Podcast Network, which is an entity of the Equine Network, LLC.